I'm Bear Grylls and today we're going to look at some of the top survival movies and figure out just how realistic they are. So in this clip from The Revenant, Leo survives by gutting a dead horse and uh, sleeping inside it. This brings back good memories. But the thing is it totally works. I mean I've done that in the Sahara with a with a camel. This Berber tribesman said to me, he said that he'd once survived a sandstorm by sheltering inside the carcass of a dead camel. So we had this camel this, this, that had died and I said, this is a perfect chance to show that you can do this. And the crew kind of looked at me like, really? But I gutted it and got inside it and took the, the skin off as well and used that as like a blanket. And, and I wake him up and I was on Larium at the time, which is anti-malarial, which gives you pretty weird dreams. I had a dream that the camel had come back to life and I was like, then I woke up inside this thing and I was like really freaked out. But hey, look, good for him. You know, survival is all about doing the unimaginable and the difficult. Number one priority in the wild is always protection, whether that's from, you know, wild animals or from the weather in this case. And him getting inside that got him out of the cold, got him out of the wind and saved his life. So doing the unimaginable, doing the difficult, and number one priority, protection. Good for Leo. So this is Castaway Tom Hanks uh, surviving by doing the difficult thing uh, with no experience and very little equipment of trying to light a fire. You know one of my favourite bits about this clip is the, the sweat that is dripping off his nose and puts a fire out. I've got quite a big nose and I always have had so many times the same problem where you're over and you're really working it and the sweat's pouring off and I've just got an ember and a bit of sweat have just gone straight in and put it out. But um, hey, listen, making fire is hard with nothing and it's about one thing, persistence, persistence, persistence. And you know, you always see it on TV and it takes 30 seconds, but the reality I've spent over 12 hours before trying to make a fire. And it's especially hard on your own because you know, essentially you're trying to create heat through friction and doing that alone is really hard. But um, this was an iconic clip and I, as I said, I know this one so well and it was filmed really well, accurate. And once you have it going, it changed everything for him. You know, protection from you know, from wildlife and for signaling and for warmth and for boiling water and for making tools and everything. And the fire is the heart of it all. So well done, Tom. So this clip is from iconic, one of my favorite films, listen, Point Break, uh, when Utah jumps out of the plane with no parachute and eventually catches up with Bodhi and you know the rest, here you go. I mean, it's, listen, guys, this is legendary. These are, these, these are iconic moments, you know. And the thing is, sometimes you've got to suspend a little bit of realism. <laughs> but he's getting low. We're on about two minutes. <laughs> it's the highest free fall. You could wrap your legs through and your arms through some chest straps and stuff and, and hold on and actually that has been done. I mean the thing is I speak from experience as well. I, I broke my back in a free fall parachuting accident whilst I was serving in the in the British Special Forces. A canopy just went really bad when I, I deployed it and I know that feeling of sort of falling and, and the raw terror of you know it's not quite right. And um, it's totally a situation where you could pull, the pilot comes out, it's starting to furl open, and you hit the ground and it would probably save your life. But we're talking tenths of a second one way or the other between dying and, and not. But hey, it's a great moment in the film. And uh, the bit that is a suspension of reality is the time frame. Your, your normal free fall from 12,000 feet, it's over in, you know, 30 seconds. So he would have been have to be at the edge of space for this one to work. But the great thing about it is it kind of, we all grew up on this movie and you watch it and I never once as a kid questioned that. I just go, this is epic. So this clip is from the film Everest when Rob Hall is up there in horrific conditions and is, is dying on the mountain. God, stop shaking, right? I not only know this scene from this film well, I know that situation well. And I was on Everest a couple of years after Rob died up there. I actually saw Rob up there 
you know, when we climbed it pretty well, perfectly preserved. You know, he was so close and, and, I, and I knew that story so well and I just had to call a move away from him and, and finish this and, and get up and get down and, and stay alive. But it was a very hard, powerful moment see, seeing him there. But I watched this film and wept throughout it, if I'm honest, I really did. I'd never seen it so realistically and beautifully told. So this clip is from Titanic when they are in the water, the ship's gone down and they are in a bad cold situation. It's so cold. Swim wrong. Okay, so this is a, another situation that I've experienced many times of being truly, truly cold and icy cold water. And again, this is really realistically done of just how sapping and how fast it can happen. You know, I've had to cross freezing cold rivers in Siberia in winter and swim frozen lakes and under the ice and you name it. And the cold robs you of your senses and your abilities and you can't move your fingers and you can't move your hands and then your arms and you can't think or concentrate and everything goes backwards and you can't, you know, and it's, it's a very hard thing to fight. You know, I think it was pretty realistically told, really. You know, I mean, maybe the reality is that they would have both died faster and quicker. In that sort of temperature and water, without survival equipment and with normal clothes, you're gonna be unable to speak or even function within 10, 15 minutes, you know, and you're gonna be dead pretty soon after. So survival time in cold water is low. Be careful. So this is a great clip from Crocodile Dundee where Linda is going down to fill her water bottle at the billabong and she thinks all is good, but all ain't good. So this, guys, this is an epic, an epic moment, you know, and who hasn't leapt out of there? seat in the cinema watching, watching this one. The thing, it's very, very hard to get a knife through crocodile. There is a little bit a gap between the skull and, and the rest of the body where you can get it in, but I've had it before with, I remember we're taking Drew Brees on an expedition into the jungle once and we came across this croc and it was definitely not as big as that one because you wouldn't manage it for real in a saltwater crocodile that big. That was the unrealistic bit. But I've had it before where we got on the top of it and Drew was across it and I was there and we had the knife out and I'm saying to Drew, just drive it down and we're pushing it on and he, he can't get it in and, you know, and eventually I just grabbed this rock and the croc's spinning around, I grabbed the rock and Drew's got his hand on the knife and I'm like, bash the rock on top of the knife and in it goes and that's the end of the croc. Afterwards, Drew goes, do you know how much my hand is in short for? And the NFL don't even know I'm here in the jungle with you. I go, sorry, I wasn't thinking about that at the time. I was just trying to get this knife in the croc. He goes, you nailed it, you hit the knife, but an inch either way, that would have been my hand gone. But the thing is, you've got to be really, really careful of saltwater crocodiles. You know, you, you, you only get that one wrong once. But hey, Croc Dundee, he nailed it. Good for him. He acted fast and he put the knife into the correct place. This is a clip from Bird Box where Sandra Bullock trying to cross a river blindfolded. Never underestimate the power of white moving water. So I haven't seen this clip, so this is, this is, oh, they're in a boat, this is okay. Although blindfolded in the rapid. Although the thing about rapids, you do want to kind of follow the, the, the power of the main flow, the tongue of the middle. So sometimes the less you do, the better, in a way. So maybe blindfold, oh, it's just still sketchy. This is really sketchy. Well, that was predictable, wasn't it? You know, listen, do not get into, first of all, do not get into whitewater rapids that big without right equipment, without the right training experience and with no backup. A boat like that's a disaster for a starter. That's even before you're blindfolded. So that to me was a recipe for disaster, truly. And I think the truth is Sandra Bullock would be toast. So in this clip, Michael from The Office attempts to survive in the wild with nothing but a knife, some duct tape, and a, his sense of humor. In case I need to fashion a shelter or make some sort of water vessel. Do you know what, I bet he had a laugh filming this, don't you? Well, if you take a look at this, 
I tented my pants. I tented my pants. I gotta use that line. Shelter. And this little guy may be Dunder Mifflin paper someday. <laughs> well, first of all, he's thinking like a survivor. He's being resourceful. He's already thinking about the, the tree's gonna end up as paper. His pants are his shelter. He got a big smile on his face. He's got bags of positivity. Those are key traits in a survivor. Although how good that shelter was. We didn't get the wide shot of that, did we? I think there might be a little bit of, you know, shelter's gotta protect you from wind, rain, storms. Michael's pants. But for spirit, ingenuity, and, um, and positivity, full marks. So we've seen a bunch of clips from Hollywood's depiction of survival scenarios. And actually the clips we picked, they, these are pretty good ones. You know, they've been well done, but ultimately survival is all about this heart, spirit, never giving up. And, uh, and I think they had that.